uh, a few years, was it two, three years ago? About three. Three yeah. years ago. Yeah. We, were, <clears throat> we went to a southern town in Vietnam called Kamau. It's a, it's a, it's a southern, like uh, the Key West. All the way Florida. at the bottom. Yes. Yeah. And the gospel has just started to come into that area. And a friend of ours, it's a long, great testimony in itself, but he was basically just a uneducated poor guy who started preaching the gospel and it just spread, you know, throughout. Anyway, we went there for a conference and they asked us to pray for people over three days. In that conference, um, there are many miracles that we participated in. And one in particular I've shared with you in the past was my wife's praying for uh, a young boy who was deaf from birth and he was healed and it was caught on video and shared throughout Vietnam, especially among the deaf. And we ended up, we ended up praying for uh, several deaf people to be healed in Hoi An when they recognized my wife from the video and they said, I know you, you're in a video. Um, so, uh, and then many people were saved from that boy and his family's testimony. Yes. Um, now, what I didn't, I, I heard other things that I had prayed for people and Jennifer prayed for people and these miracles had happened, but I just got a good one today that I didn't know about. Um, Jennifer, I think you know the details better. And I want to share it today because anybody struggling with sickness or disease or cancer in particular might benefit from hearing this. Uh, so um, I have a, a, the text, the message from a brother in Christ who we get involved in Kamau, the south and the south of the tip south of Vietnam. So he said that uh, today our church going to bless the brother Lin, L-I-N-H, uh, because he he just built a brand new home. And then he say, I am sure you remember this brother. And uh, I really, I'm scratching my head. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't want to be rude to him, but you know. And he say, your husband, pray for this man that God brought him from death to life that he got the sickness, brain cancer, and the doctors say that nothing else they can do for him. So come home and whatever he want to, just enjoy that at the, for the short moment. So they even bought the coffin and prepare for the funeral. So uh, that day after we are very tired from ministry, hundreds and hundreds of people, and a couple of pastors and Bill and I and their wives went to get some to eat and some coconut, you know, because we love that. And I remember in middle of Bill drinking a coconut fruit and a, a pastor of that place in the conference came to the coffee shop and say, Pastor Bill, I need you. Can you come? And I need you to pray for somebody really sick. So you know that Bill like, okay, jump out right away. And he didn't realize that this pastor bring him in a motorcycle and without a helmet too. No, he threw me a helmet. Oh, oh really? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. A little one. <laughs> yeah. So he like didn't realize that, you know, because when we come from that conference to the restaurant or the hotel, we have taxi to take us, but that pastor took him in a Honda motorbike. So when they get there, I wasn't there with him because Bill say you stay here, you you know, uh, on my behalf to be with other pastors, I will go with him. And besides that, only one seat for on the motorbike, so it's not for me. So when he came back, his shirt, it just wet up the sweat. And he, he's so, I, I can see his face is red and he say that, yes, uh, I pray for several people. And some of them got healed right away. Yes. Okay. And then that's it. We didn't, you know, until, like I say, a couple of days ago, that brother said that your husband, he prayed for this brother, Lynn. And Lynn say that when Pastor Bill blew the air on his brain and demand out and command out cancer, that he say he smelled the fragrance beautiful just like you know he never smelled and then he went into the sleep and then the next day he said the next day he got up he has the joy that the first thing joy in his heart he get up he eat and then he say that 
he, he get more and more strength and the, the family didn't know what's going on but they just say oh thank you thank you lord thank you lord but you know they did not know and he say that i know because the pastor last night told me that god healed me already so i'm healed i'm healed he keeps saying that and up to date no more cancer in the brain because the doctor say i don't know what's happened you know but no more cancer and then he 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 went to remember this guy is have a coffin in his house already you know get ready to bury but then now he worked he saved money and he built the beautiful home and then the church went to his house to bless and pray and blessing over that home he had a coffin in his house that's how he knew he was going to die so uh, i'm i'm very grateful for i love these testimonies because and we forgot about it yeah well I, yeah and because we prayed for so as you many, said hundreds yeah. of people yeah. i don't know and yeah. i don't know how many more testimonies are out there um but they availed themselves of the power of god and humbled themselves to be prayed amen. for amen. by even me and there are people in our own church who won't even have us pray for them and you're sick so if you want to stay sick that's your choice but god has made provision for your healing. And this is why we love to go to Vietnam. These people have very little money. They're in a communist country. They were raised Buddhist ancestor worshipers. And when they hear the gospel, they respond. And when they hear that people are being healed, they come seeking Jesus and seeking the healing prayer. Now, I know that this, what this testimony did for me personally is the Lord reminded me that he works through me and he'll work through anybody who has faith Amen. and a commitment to obey him. Mm -hmm. Now, my regret is when I came back from Vietnam and then I'm in a marginalized ministry with marginalized Christians. I'm sorry, guys, I got to tell you the truth with weak commitments. And I begin to think, why am I serving these people? Let me see what's on. Let me find a good detective show to watch instead of praying for people who don't want my prayers. They don't want my ministry and they don't want to be healed. They don't want to commit to Jesus. So I said, Lord, take me back to Vietnam as soon as you can. And I'll give Zoom messages to the people here. The truth is he had a physical coffin in his house, but the people here, they are in luxury. They have good jobs. They're comfortable. And yet there's a coffin, an eternal coffin waiting for those that passively disassociate themselves with the things of God. And I'm hoping today to preach this to you. And I hope the Holy Spirit will take it and, and it convict you. You passively come into the service. If you come at all, you come late. When the worship's on, you're talking to somebody else. When we're praying on Wednesday's nights, you're on the computer doing other things. When you should be praying for the person next to you. Thank God I don't have a salary from anybody. <laughs> and I'm working for the Lord. And I hope every one of us sees it that way. I'm sorry to be that blunt, but that's the truth. Lord Jesus, I just... Oh, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, when Pastor Bill talking, just finished talking, I heard uh, in my heart, he said, uh, my people are so comfortable, too comfortable. They are not, they are full. Like uh, they're not hungry anymore. They're not hungry for my bread no more. I don't know what that, that he's talking about, but yes, that's what I heard. They are not hungry. Yeah, that's right. And they are that's full. Exactly. Full. Yep. Yep. If, if you, yep. if you, LL, and uh, not, not to God anymore. They just go do whatever they want to do. Yep. Thank you. Lord, we pray for conviction on this word. And I pray that they can hear this. I pray we can all hear this. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, please forgive me for for not just putting. Lord, you, you want to use me. You want to use Jennifer and ICF for your purposes. And please forgive me, God, for letting other people and other things in this world get in the way of my passion to serve you the way you've called me to serve you. And Lord, please forgive me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.